Witch Fandom Community Podcast brought to you by Flashbacks Within Flashbacks. For when just one flashback about your lovable, smiling mentor type figure who died a tragic death at your own very hands isn't tear jerky enough. Hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> my name is Del, and today I'm joined by Nomi. Hiya! Yeah, hey, okay. So, oh man, we were talking off air about this a little bit, but these three episodes are, I feel like it's maybe one of the most serious stretches of episodes that we've encountered in a row so far. I feel like these are quite, like, I don't think they're gritty per se, but it's like, there's not a lot of levity breaking up some pretty serious fight and emotional content. Yes, yeah, it was it was very hard hitting. Like it's not hard hitting, but it's definitely it got you in the feels. There was emotions. From a technical standpoint, it jumped all over the place cuz you know, Oh, we... that does not surprise me at all. I'm so <laughs> curious to hear those differences. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than like we saw a bit of everybody. There's a yeah. You know, yeah, we actually kind of, we didn't see much of Ichigo, but I think he made a little appearance, and certainly two out of the three, if not all three of the episodes mm-hmm. we're covering today, yeah. actually, yeah. Huh. All right, should we get into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Yes, please. Alrighty, so, after a full three minutes of Previously On, episode 158, <laughs> Right Arm of the Giant, Left Arm of the Devil, begins with the Chad versus Fallen Spider number 107 fight raging on. With Chad showing off his new fancy shield of an arm, he also reveals, much to Gantenbein's dismay, that he is also moving faster than him. When all hope looks lost for Gantenbein, he decides to remind Chad of an Arankar's true power and that he too has a fancy new shield, and releases his resurrection without, I may point out, a release command. With his new dragon fist in tow, Gantenbein, it seems, has the upper hand, bridging the power divide. But, of course, this is a battle of one-ups, and Chad reveals he has another ace up his sleeve. Quite literally. His right arm is the power of his grandfather, the power to protect, but his left arm, the left arm is the power of attack, something he found whilst training. And so he reveals his brazo esquida del diablo, his left arm of the devil. With it comes a hidden move, la muerta, which, fittingly enough, is a punch that imprints a skull symbol on the wall. Being the kind-hearted giant he is, though, and despite his puncher's name, he literally meaning death, Chad lets Gantenbein live, saying that without him going all out, then he, Chad, would have never found his true power. As Chad walks outside, inside, inside but outside, there's a sun. What <laughs> in the name of Gandalf has Eisen wizened up this time? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Gantenbein opened his eyes in panic as a figure draws near, telling Chad to run. Remember Tall, Dark, and Handsome from a couple of episodes ago? Oh, yes, I do. Yep, it's Noitora! (gasps) (laughs) Despite the protests of the fallen Espada, Chad, overconfident, prepares to fight, but his punch does little to no damage, leaving Noitora to deliver a devastating blow. Which leads us straight into episode 159, Yastora Saro dies, or Ihime's tears. It seems everyone felt the defeat of Chad. Ichigo and Nell, Renji and Dondochake, even Orihime, who was also visited by Okiora, who explains that Noitora is impatient and was supposed to wait. Orihime refuses to believe that Chad is dead and tells Okiora, who counters her claim with that they were all bound to die, what difference does it make if one dies now? This causes Orihime to retaliate, slapping Okiora like the girl boss she is across the face. Unperturbed, Orkiora leaves, reminding her to eat and threatening to tie her up and force-feed her if she didn't comply. Back with Noitora, a new figure by the name of Tesra asks his master if he's going to deliver the final blow. Noitora responds with if he wouldn't be the strongest if he only defeated weaklings. As they're about to leave, having found a new target to fight, Chad returns to the fight, lunging at Noitora, but he doesn't get very far for his attack is blocked by Tesra. Exhausted, Chad collapses again. Enraged, Noitora lectures his fractione on interfering as he is the strongest Espada and nothing can hurt him. Elsewhere, Wenji and Dondo Chaka have paused to process the defeat of Chad and are suddenly plummeted into holes in the floor which lead straight to the pink-haired mad scientist himself, Xylaparo Grants. 
Not wanting to waste any time, and obviously slept during Ichigo's lecture on how to conserve strength and power, Renji goes full Bankai, only to have it break mid-release. And as if this episode hasn't jumped around enough, we will back we end back at Wukia, reminding us that she is still in battle with Aranero, who has just released his true form. Which brings us right to episode 160, which is called Testament. Your heart is right here. Uh, as Nomi said, we return to Rukia's desperate battle with ninth Espada, Aranero Aruruweri who is still wearing the handsome, punk-ass noble face of Rukia's former lieutenant and mentor, Kayen Shiba. It's, uh, not going too well for Rukia. She finds herself mired in self-doubt as she realizes just how much of Kayen's being, body and soul, Araniero possesses, and she wonders whether she actually failed at the one thing she was trying to do when she faced off against the corrupted form of Cayenne all those years ago. So as those thoughts rifle through her head, we slip into a flashback with Rukia as she recalls training with Cayenne and running blissfully along grassy slopes, forming a healthy, satisfying mentor-mentee relationship, and discussing the nuances of what it means to have a purpose, and what it means to fight and to fend. And eventually, our queen regains her resolve, and she reconstructs her broken Zanpakuto with her third dance, Shirafune, and impales Aranyero through his cayenne-shaped head. Aranyero flops around and screams in pain for a little while, and uh, even though Rukia's will to move forward and save her friend Orihime has returned, Rukia too has taken some serious damage and she collapses. And uh, yeah, that's where we're left. Th- th- that's, it's, it's a lot. Actually, it's kind of only like two, two and a half, yeah, ish fights. I, I guess it's like two and two and maybe two separate halves if you count <laughs> whatever Chad was doing with Noritora, yeah, and then whatever Renji was doing with Zyle. We got some, I, you know, I, yeah, we got some beginnings and some. I guess we didn't see a single full fight over the course of these three episodes, but even so, yeah. It's tied up some loose ends. You know, we finally got to the end of the Chad versus Gantenbein. We Which, like, fun. honestly, thank God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I feel like... No shade to Chad as well. Yeah. Like, truly. He just... He's been, he's been dealt a, a pretty <laughs> shitty right and left hand when it comes to the fights that we've actually been able to see. Pun intended? <laughs> yes, 100%. It wasn't at first, and then I was halfway through the sentence, and I went, aha, there's something uh-huh. there. So, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and... I mean, I th- I feel like Rukia's has been dragged out even longer though because hers started yeah, ages I ago. Agree. Yep. So, but yeah, shall we? Yeah. Shall I start off with the those interesting manga anime differences oh my God. for the first chapter, the first one? Yeah, please, because frankly. I was looking at these episodes and I was like, the structure of the storytelling here is so messy. I was like, this has to be some spliced together manga <laughs> yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, yeah I'm very curious. <laughs> okay, so to be fair, episode 158 isn't bad. It's two chapters. Okay. It's chapter 260, Right Arm of the Giant 2, because the previous one was Right Arm of the Giant 1. Oh, makes sense. And 261, Left Arm of the Devil. But, fun fact, the Viz translation calls it left arm of the demon. So there's probably some oh. intentional word changes there because they didn't want to offend. Yes and no, because Gantenbein uses the word Akuma, which I heard, which I made note of when I was watching slash listening to the sub. And if I'm not mistaken, that word, because devil can have some like, Western ideology, Judeo-Christian connotations Mm -hmm. to it. Let me just confirm, actually. Uh, Yeah, it's more like malevolent spirit, but, oh, apparently, too, okay, this, the things that I'm learning... Um, it's all, it is the name that is assigned to Satan in Japanese Christianity. So I guess it carries both connotations, but devil in English can kind of be 
a, a concept or like the capital D devil. So you know, uh. yeah, because when I because. Like, you don't need to know too much of Spanish to know that Diablo is devil. Yeah, yeah. And even when I was just checking myself and was putting it through Google Translate, um, initially my thing was set to Scottish Gaelic and it came up with Satan, which is the Scottish <gasps> Gaelic. Ooh! It's also a swear word in Norwegian, fun fact. You can just be like, Satan, oh. and it's like it's like saying, oh, fuck. So if anyone wants to swear in Norwegian, <laughs> that's a good one for you. You're welcome. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Diablo's like, Definitely devil. So it was interesting to me that the Viz manga translated it to demon. Hmm. So yeah. I wonder if it's because we know we've been introduced already to the concept of a hell in Bleach, and so maybe they wanted to separate the hell that Western viewers might be expecting from the hell that exists in Christianity. And this is one more way to say, hey, we're not talking about that metaphysical system. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Although, how many people actually remember that um, Hollow from season one with the parakeet kid in the gates of hell opening? Um, <laughs> I guess it. I mean, high key. I wonder if it depends on how how much they've kept up with like recent releases because and and also like you know Hellverse the movie exists. Like we can call a spade a spade, and like we're we're recording yeah. the podcast in the in twenty twenty two. So like, I I don't know. Yeah, it's I hmm. I'm trying to remember because I know that when this arc was airing, it was they they did some stuff around this time to kind of prep for the release of Diamond Dust Rebellion. I don't remember when I think Hellverse came out after Diamond Dust Rebellion. I can't recall. Um, yeah, it's the last yeah. one. I think. Oh, yeah. is it? Okay. Well. Yeah, it's number four. Never mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> Diamond Dust is one. Then what? It's... Really? No, no, it's not. That's a lie. Diamond Dust is two. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, was I, was like, I don't about... think it was the first one. <laughs> No. Memories of Nobody was one, then it was Diamond Dust, then yes. it was Fate to Black, then it was Hellverse. Yes. I go. thought that yeah. Hellverse was the most the most recent. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, I didn't watch Diamond Dust Rebellion once this Christmas. I need to make up for that. I should watch that soon. Oh. oh I know. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the manga and anime differences going in is we had a cutaway of Peshe and Ishida in the anime. Um, which was literally just anime only. Um, Ishida had this really cool fight, but then it's ruined by using him as comic relief again. So it was kind of like Dime playing Ishida's role again. Yeah. And then it was literally just general fight fight filler, flashback fillers, um, cutaway fillers to build up suspense with Chad's friends, and then censorship. Uh, Oh, really? Yeah, bloods and fights. Chad's punch with Noitora at the end yeah. of the episode. <gasps> yeah. Um, in the anime, um, it's less impactful because in the manga, there's an there's actually an imprint of Chad's fist on Noitora's chest. So, oh, you know, he so has some more power impressive. behind that. Oh, right? Come on. Give Chad some love. Let like, him have he a, can let him have a moment a one time. Yeah. Right? <laughs> But yeah, that's that was pretty much it. Just a lot of filler fights and making Ashido out to be the comic relief character again. God, I, and at that point too, it's like it is even in the anime. I'm like, it's not Ashida's fault because they pair him with Peshe, and I just, I just, I've said this before, I think, but I just don't find Peshe or Don Don Chaka funny. Like, I don't. No. <sighs> They remind me of Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King. Yes, but less good. <laughs> but less good, yeah. Yeah. Also, like, Timon and Pumbaa, like, can you imagine Peche and Don Chaka being, like, foster parents to a main character type? I can't. It would be a nightmare. Oh, it would be. Look at how they treat now. Bless. Right? Wait, good point. We literally have an example of this. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I do think it's true that if somebody were running around behind Ishida being like, ooh, I'm going to get your uniform dirty with this gross thing, that Ishida would not be about that life and would, like, definitely would run away. But I also, I don't know, I just... He'd have some more decorum while he, while he did it. He wouldn't more work, decorum like, decorum and, like, scream. less patience. I yeah, just feel like he um... doesn't, he's not going to put up with that bullshit. No. <laughs> Probably just stab him with his blade that's not a blade, you know. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Zayla Schneider, yeah. tiny little chainsaw. Yeah. So, did you have any discussion points for this one then? Uh, 
if anything, I suppose I had, it was really satisfying to hear some explanation about, okay, so Chad's powers, I think, in general, are worth talking about. Something that I liked was the way his grandfather's ideologies about fighting are carried forward into what Chad is doing now, now that his grandfather is not in his life anymore. Um, Yeah. The thing that I thought was not made clear, despite Chad's explanation, is still that thing of where do these powers come from. So, and, and I don't know whether it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, is it coincidence or does it actually mean something that Chad has this Mexican heritage, which means that he's got heritage from a Spanish speaking country and Hueco Mundo is linguistically themed in that way. So it's like, I I understand those connections, I guess, from a writing standpoint, but I'm also like, okay, yeah, but where do they come from, though? Like, that's still not really explained yet. Yeah, no, I agree. There's definitely, and it's something you guys said in the last episode as well, Mm. like the whole coincidence. And we saw it again. Um, Yeah, okay, we've got the skull on his shield, but then with the La Muerta punch, there's that Mm -hmm. whole kind of skull coming up from behind him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, there's the whole signifying of the death. You've got the um, um, Mexican traditions of honoring the death with um, Dias de Muerta and all of that sort of um, traditions that they have down there. So there's definitely linking to it all. But then there's also... And we're bringing up this word that we've brought up in previous episodes, the duality of it all. Yeah, 100%. Yes. He's got the duality and the balance. He's got his shield in his right arm and he's got his fighting, you know, his attack power in his left arm, which is Chad left-handed? Is he ambidextrous? Because most people wield their sword in their left arm, in their most dominant their right, hand. Uh, yeah, right, in their dominant hand. Most people are right-hand dominant. Yeah. 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 Um, but then you've also got the with the whole balance thing and we've had this conversation of um you know hollows being the balance and the whole the the three worlds that we know being a balance right. of you know the soul society and the human world and the hollows being the balance so there's that connection there as well so it is it is very interesting i'm interested to see what other people think and what's going to come out if anything's going to come out in future with regards to Chad. Yeah, yeah. The other thought that I had was, or I suppose it's really just, it's something that I liked that now that I'm starting to think about observing this through, because I mean, you know, we we watch and we read Bleach and we're going to be drawn to some characters more than others. And I always liked Chad, but Chad is never somebody that I've bothered thinking about too much. So it's another one of those things where as we're going through Bleach again and having these conversations in the context of this podcast, I'm now like, oh, wait, I actually do want to pay more attention to Chad because I haven't really done that before. Um, I thought it was... It was just a neat piece of personal development for Chad when he said to Gantenbein, I was able to gain my full strength and realize that because you fought me at your full strength. So from a power scaling standpoint, I really liked the fact that up to now, like Chad is so used to being so much, oh my gosh, fun fact that I learned when I was looking some stuff up earlier, Chad is taller than Shunsui. Did you know that? I did not, no. I know. So Shunsui's like six. 6'4", Chad is like 6'5 and a half. Oh my gosh. So that's a fun surprise. I didn't realize, um, which I only thought because I was thinking about fights that Chad, I say fights, encounters that Chad has had in the past um, and wondering like what opportunities for power scaling he might've had. Um, but it's actually not a bad example because it's it's not like that was really a fight when he encountered Shunsui Kyoriku in the first arc. Uh, but even if he had... Like, Shunsui is this amazing captain-level fighter, uh, and he, who, who we know is powerful enough to go up against head captain Yamamoto and survive, right? So, uh, the idea that Shunsui would ever need to, like, go full strength to fight somebody like Chad is like, oh, Chad, you sweet boy. Absolutely not. So, in this case, 
Um, it, so in that case, like, there was such a mismatch in power that, like, of course Chad wasn't going to have the opportunity to fight somebody who was at their full power. And then by contrast, people that he's, like, the punks that he beats up in the world of the living, Chad hasn't had to go full power to beat up those mm. punks. This is the first time, probably in his whole entire life, that he has faced off against someone who went, oh shit, I need to use my full power to beat you, Chad. And so then Chad was able to go, oh wait, you're not holding back, and this is hard for me. So I need yeah. to scale up my power for that really specific reason. And and those circumstances just hadn't been in place in any of his other fights, probably in his whole entire life. So... I don't know. I, I liked Chad's discovery of his new powers via that kind of fight for him. I thought that was a nice journey. Yes, definitely. And, like, you know, the whole thing of he gave back by saying, thanks, I'm not going to kill you. Yeah. But then, on the other hand, he maybe got a little bit too cocky in thinking that he could now take on Notora. Oh, yeah. But I also love that journey for him. Like, he's feeling good. He sees this other Iran car. I don't know whether he knows what rank Noitora holds or not, but he's like, oh, yeah, look at this stick spoon man. I can punch this man. <laughs> mm. uh, bless him. Yep. Yeah. And, like, you know, he's not really been... A fighter, as you say, like no. Ichigo's. He's fighting for Ichigo. He's not fighting for himself. Yep. So like all this power is coming from you know because he's wanting to go out there. He's wanting to save Oahime. Yep. He's saving Oahime because Ichigo's going after her. You know that sort of stuff. So. Yep. Yep. He's got the motivation and the circumstances lined up mm -hmm. right this time. Yep. How about you? Did you have any other takes or points of discussion for this episode? Um, yeah, no, I've got nothing. I've just got some fun facts about the manga. Ooh, yes, hit me. Okay. So this is episode 260 was actually the end of a volume. Volume 29. Oh, cha so oh cha I was cha chapter. Yeah, okay, got you. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yep. Chapter 261 is the start of volume 30, which is called There Is No Heart Without You. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> yep. And of course, the you can guess who's on the front cover of this new <gasps> volume. He's got a cover. He's got a cover. Wait, what? You know, my son yeah. doesn't have a. When I say my son, I mean obviously Manu Ukidake. He doesn't have a fucking cover. Yeah. <laughs> but Kyan you, you, wait, does. I just want to confirm. Kyan has a fucking cringe. cover. Wait, actually, let me confirm that. But I'm pretty sure. I don't know if this is me mixing the fact that I'm salty about the fact that he's never had a white day outfit, which is ridiculous ridiculous if anyone should have a fucking white day outfit it should be my boy he likes giving gifts he's he i can't uh, let me just i don't think he does though hang on no he has a santa claus outfit though so he gives gifts that way yeah a lot yo, okay fine <laughs> fucking zyl has a santa claus outfit and he also has a white day i don't know what to tell you <laughs> okay yeah no as far as i know he doesn't have um wait what is this i think this is no, I believe this is... Let me just confirm that this is fan-made. I don't think this is real. I've found one, but it, it doesn't... I've never seen it before, so I think it's a piece of fan art, which... Yeah. It's what number cute is as it? hell. Uh, well, hang on. It says 68, but I, I don't think... Hang on. Oh, that's uh, one of the last ones. Isn't yeah. It? Which... Nope, that's got a character that if listeners are listening along they won't have met yet but it's it's another one it's another one of my boys but uh not not the right one <laughs> so um that said well you know this is kind of neat um this is uh i'm gonna say super spoilery for the final arc but somebody put together a, a, a concept volume cover this person's name is marlon moab um, it's on Pinterest is where I'm finding it. Um, I'll drop it for you, Nomi, so you can see what it okay. is. Okay. Uh, oh, and we'll drop yeah. it for the listeners as well. But, like, this is these this is major, major, major final arc spoilers. So if you're avoiding those, like, do not click this link. Do not look at it. If you're down with that or if you've read the final arc, then you'll probably think it's really cool or really sad or both. Um, anyway, here's this. Da, 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 I was like, I don't think so. Oh, but, yeah, right. So, oh yeah. I was like, that feels fake. Yeah, because it is. Um, 
All right. Well, anyway, so Kyan's on the cover, huh? Yeah, Kyan's on the cover, and then God of course, bless. all the all the new volumes. Kubo likes his poetry. Oh, yeah. So the poem for this one is The wound lies deep like the ocean floor mm. The sin mm. is red growing paler in death <gasps> oh. mm. And he has a water type song cocteau and everything He this does is, this, this is, That's Damn he didn't pull any punches with the emotional shit My god No he did not <sighs> So, yeah, and then at the end of volume 29, there is, um, I don't know if the listeners watched the filler episodes in which um, the gang got separated before reaching Las Noches and they arrived in a forest oh, of Menos. Yes. And, and Wookie has spent some time with Ashido. Um, who is not a canon character, who- by the way, so listeners, if you don't know who that is, like... Well, unless he's half cat, he's, he's half. half is, there, are they like a, is there like a little doodle or something? Um, Kubo has added his concept art of Ashido and the Forest of the Menas. Oh. He wasn't able to add it to the manga due to timing issues, so was happy to have it included in the anime. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, jeez, yeah. I guess I always thought it was straight up filler. That's neat. No, yeah, it's one of those. Um, he d- he wanted to add it into the manga, but he couldn't because of time con. Got it. Okay, that yeah. explains a lot because in the filler episodes, Rukia like meets this dude, and then there's a moment where she's like, "I promise, I will not forget you, and I will definitely come back for you." And he's like, "All right." He's like, he's wearing a shahaka show, like he's a shinigami yeah. type. Um, and then what she doesn't do is come back for him. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, and then um. At the end, you'll like this one as well. He's oh, also boy. added in a full extra manga. This, you know, this volume was chocker with extras um, of a beach episode <gasps> where everybody oh, goes to the beach. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's there and it includes Byakura and Wukia bonding over sand statues and an Anukataki memorial of him being buried in the sand. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Which it will get, it is animated and it is in a fella episode that is coming up yeah. um, that we will be skipping, but we you guys will are more, be, than, alas. more than happy it's to so watch. It's <laughs> so good, though. I watch that episode kind of often, too. I watch that one. Yeah. I watch the stupid movie-making one as well. I love both of those very much. Uh, there's some fun, there are some fun ones that it just really pop are. out every now and again. Yeah. It's like, I mean, but anyway, those is- are my... Sorry, I'm just gonna say if you want to whatever. If you want to yeah. see pretty people in swimsuits, then like, they're, 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 <laughs> and I don't just mean my son. He, you know, he like, <laughs> I've I've been salty about this for you. I'm just gonna whatever. He like looked at his choices and went, you know what I want? A plain white pair of swim trunks. Like, who let you do that? Anyway, it's not the it's not the point. <laughs> I, no, I know no. it's a bummer. I, I, he, he needs, needs a, a he needs a Vangiku or someone. Yeah, he needs yeah, a Vangiku. Yeah, Vangiku's fucking there. She could have helped. <laughs> have you seen the way he they helped everybody else? <laughs> Did nobody they think to suggest everybody else? anything else? I don't. He <laughs> should have just gone shopping with the girls because they all got cute swimsuits. Can you imagine? That would have been so, like Kione. Kione was there. Oh, she could have picked something no. up. <sighs> I digress. So it's okay. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Thank you. It's like it's not, yeah. but oh, you can't change it now. <laughs> As if I need further proof that Kubo didn't care too much about my boy. Mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's not even in these episodes. Let's talk about some people who no. are in these episodes that I yeah. well, okay. I don't want to like fast forward to another fave if if you had other things to say actually, but I just want to acknowledge no. that I'm excited to talk about Zyl at some point because I assume we're gonna do that. Yeah, I'm good. We can move on to episode 159. <laughs> okay. Which actually, um, yeah. Okay. So first thing that I want to touch on is one of these very, very first scenes where do I so, do you want me to do manga anime differences first? Oh shoot. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Still getting used to the new structure. Thank you. <laughs> you're fine. You're you're too excited. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> so this episode 159 for manga anime differences was a hot mess (gasps) and yeah that tracks actually (laughs) 
Yeah, here's why. It takes the first half of episode, of chapter 262, Unblendable, the first half of chapter 263, Unexpected, the second half of Don't Say That Name Again, which is chapter 264, the first half of 265, which is Bang the Boar, and the middle part of 267, which is Legions of Regret. Jesus. That is a hard time. That's five different chapters. Yeah. Wow. There was a lot of jumping around. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And then for actual differences, um, at the start of the episode, it starts off with Xylapero stalking Renji mm. with watching an old fight of him versus um, Ilfort, oh, which is yeah. anime only. What? It's mentioned Yep, it's anime oh, only. It's okay. mentioned briefly in a future chapter, but it doesn't actually show him watching. Okay, well, which is good. Um, so in that case, I'm not going to like bring that up in a meaningful way again because my question going into this was like, where did that footage come from? I like, I don't put it past Zyle to just have like secret video cameras on his twin brother all the time. Like that mm-hmm. tracks for me, but also what? Oh, or it's just insights into his character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we've got Chad's death. You see everybody reacting to Chad's death, um, but we don't see Rukia sensing Chad's death. Oh, okay. Um, but in the manga, at this point, Rukia hasn't even met Aranero yet. So oh. that's why we see it in them. This leads up to um, Chad dies, Rukia senses it. And then literally two steps later, she meets Aranira and Aranira is like, ooh, come inside. Ooh. So this is why it's so out of whack with jumping around the chapters. And it's something Lethan mentioned last um, episode as well. Okay, you know, yeah, that yeah. Just yeah. jumps around. Um, and Ashido is a lot more beaten up in the manga as well. Oh, cause, we know, were deprived he's... of that? Are you kidding me? Fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, another kind of out of timeline continuity thing is Noitora says that Aranira releases his Zampak toe but in the manga it's um, Noitora just mentions that Aranira got to the closest one. Oh, okay okay um, which I don't know Noitz is pretty disappointed at because he was heading for Bukia because she was closer but Aranira got there first oh, okay oh that's fine so that could have been a the... whole different fight oh my god massively <laughs> especially too because Noitora's whole thing is, like, he wants to fight powerful people, and so it does that mean... I mean, sure, convenience factor, I guess, if Ruki is closest, but that also means that he considered her powerful enough to be worth fighting, maybe, so that's nice to hear. Mm. In the manga, yeah, because in the anime, he mentions, oh, um, why did... Why is Aranira releasing Zampak Toe when, you know, the person he's fighting isn't that strong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I meant I meant yeah. in, in the in the manga, potentially. Yeah, manga. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so Renji um, stops at a crossroads in the manga and Dondo Chak is like, why have you stopped? Uh, but in the, no, that was in the anime. In the manga, he stops because Rukia releases her Zampak Toe. Oh, and that, that's so much yeah, better. He, he stops and he's like, Rukia. And oh. then that's when they fall into holes, which is going to come up later. Okay. So. Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it, and in the anime it comes up later, because uh, <laughs> my, 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 my OTP needs some uh, anime representation here, people. <laughs> and then, um, again, Ishida and Peshe is filler. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Dondo Chak is crying goes on way too long in the anime which is funny because Zyle actually comments on it and <gasps> says that this has gone on for long enough yeah. which I thought was hilarious yeah 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 <laughs> somebody, Zyle is somebody's meta self insert I'm sure yeah yeah cause he can do that um, shit and like he's he can he's sassy enough he's fine <laughs> And then the cut back to Vukia in that episode is just literally just to remind us that she and Aranu are still fighting. That was just anime only as well. Ugh, yeah. They aren't fighting in the manga, so. Yeah. It did feel like the Aranyaro Rukia fight dragged on for quite a long time over the coast. Because we've been uh-huh. talking about that fight for like multiple podcast episodes this is at this third... point. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds to me like it was 
more streamlined in a way that made more sense in the manga, which tracks, but it's it's a yeah. relief, I suppose. <laughs> like, Kayan's important. Ruki is a main character. Like, not mad at that. Just, okay, like, we get it. This is, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we're getting to that stage where it's just going, it's back to back to back it's fighting. The Dragon Ball and- Z. Energy. It's. I mean, it's a shown. It's a shonen, so you know it is reminding us that there's. It, this is what people are watching for majority of the time because it's, it's a shonen true. and they fight in shonen. But I feel but, like the, you know, the, the fights that we've like, seen <laughs> up to now haven't been this kind of drawn out pace. And also, I feel like the Rukia Kayan fight is maybe. And maybe because it is just so emotionally charged for Ruki. Oh, wait, granted, Aranero literally like looked at the situation and went, "Ah, yes, I'm going to wear the face of your dead friend." Like that's intense. <laughs> um, but it, it could be because it's the most like charged, not not even with emotion, but charged with grief specifically. So this fight, mm. while it is a fight, has been a lot of talking and reminiscing. It hasn't been characters trading blows in a cool way like i could watch yoroichi versus soy phone for multiple episodes because the fight mm-hmm. part is cool even though that's emotionally charged this is kind of like they're both standing there talking at each other and thinking and feeling for a while which is a good thing like definitely reflect that is important but it's a shonen. yeah 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 yeah. All this to say, probably <laughs> but, a better, a, a better is maybe not a helpful word, but like probably a, a more, a, a fight that makes more structural sense in the manga. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> but yeah, we had, there's a, I think there's quite a lot to unpack in this episode though. Mm, okay. Because we've, we've got, well, we've got the, a lot happened in that space of 20, 30 minutes. We had... Mm-hmm. The ending of Chad versus <laughs> Chad versus Noitoa, if you or can Chad. call it that. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I um, mean, they, if you go to the wiki, they count Chad versus Kyoriku as a fight too. So, like, I think this counts. Yeah. At the very least, Chad lands, lands in a punch this time. <laughs> True. Um, we meet a Tessa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is, you know, Noitoa's um, faction. We've got some Okioa and Ohime reminding us the end goal it is to actually. Mm. Rescue or he may, and not just fight their way through this um, fortress. Oh, yeah. We have so, a uh, j- just yeah. a note on that. My my rea- that's so funny. My reaction to that was actually um, so like yes, remembering that our our gang of pals is charging through here in order to rescue Orihime. The thing that it reminded me of was like even though Ichigo is our shonen protagonist, and we know that Aizen is this big bad guy. Uh, the point of whatever Aizen is planning actually hinges on Orihime, and Aizen kind of, like, doesn't give a fuck about, like, Rukia, Renji. Like, Ichigo is an annoyance, but Aizen is here to enact some grand plan, and it involves Orihime. It, like, doesn't involve mm-hmm. any of these other people that we're spending a lot of time with. Yeah, yeah. To the point where, you know, they're forcing her to eat, which you know, oh, I have a question God, of where the food comes is from. So unpleasant. <laughs> I, I oh yeah. Yeah. Like where did the food come from? Did they just ship food in from the water of the living for the one human they have living in the like I get I don't is I, Has Uahara got another side business where he's actually actually supplying food supplies to oh um, Eisen? God, can you imagine? <laughs> I I don't I don't know. My my thought. Okay, so not to a, like whatever. I just Zyle is great, um, and uh, he. This is how do I say this without going? Um, so so a lot of the time when souls die and then go to either Soul Society or or Waco Mundo if the souls become hollows or whatever. Like, Waco Mundo is expansive enough that those souls can have been from everywhere. And so, um, 
I feel like, I don't know, whatever, doesn't matter. Zyle's from Western Europe. Like, we're just, it's fine. <laughs> when he was alive, that's where he lived. And so I was like, maybe he put, because I noticed that there was like a fork and a knife and a spoon on the little tray. And I was like, ah. oh, weird that that's the choice uh, to use like Western eating utensils. And so now I'm kind of like, did he make the food? That seems reasonable <laughs> to me that he might have scienced his way into making solid food for, for humans. Also, maybe not, but. But the idea crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, well, I mean, the knife and the fork and the spin is also reminiscent of the fact that the whole of Hueco Mundo has a Spanish theme oh, running that's true throughout too. it. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But then we get... <laughs> oh, he may get some action. Oh, he hey, get some action. True. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a rather, you know, go or he may standing up, slapping him. Yep. Legit proud of her. Like this, he's being such a dick. Uh, yeah. And she's not taking it, oh. which I'm very here for. Yes. Yeah. She's that one who just, she's hoping to annoy them that much that they'll just let her go. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> There also, uh, something that I noticed was there was there was a back and forth that Orihime and Ukiora had for a bit when the food first comes in and Ukiora go like he said, he, he commands her to eat in a bunch mm-hmm. of different ways and like multiple times over the course of a couple of minutes. But Orihime actually has, like she just keeps repeating like Chad's not dead. He's not dead. There's no way he's dead. So both of them, they're like not really having a conversation, but both of them are facing each other with this really specific kind of stubbornness. And I like I don't know that it means anything exactly or maybe it's just like eh there are parallels between people that we weren't expecting to see. I don't I don't really know, but hmm. So I guess proud of her for standing her ground and also that existed in contrast to Ukiora I don't want to say standing his ground per se because I don't feel like he's as emotionally invested as she is in in this but Mm-mm. but I but I bet we also don't know his motivations so hard to say yeah yeah definitely but yeah I know you're itching to talk about him, so do you want to talk about Zion now? I would love to. I don't really have too much okay. that's, like, specific to say other than that I'm excited. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I think it's great that he has the self-awareness to be like, I'm good at this not because I'm a particularly astute fighter, but because I am a brilliant mind in this space. <laughs> love that for him. And it's a different kind of character than we've seen among the ranks of the Espada so far. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's cute. <laughs> like I don't, <laughs> I don't have, I don't have anything insightful because we haven't seen him do very much or say very much. Um, yeah, he's. I just, I'm really happy he's there. Oh, actually, I do have a thing, which is, um, I don't know whether Renji is the kind of person who I, I also I guess we don't really know how similar or dissimilar Ilforts and Zyle or Aparo's spiritual presences are maybe they're similar maybe they're not because the two of them are slash were brothers um so I don't know whether Renji like recognizes that he has a, a, a connection to this person standing in front of him but I did think it was funny that or not funny I thought it was because I thought it was curious that Renji just went straight up Bankai right away. Like, there were no intermediate <laughs> steps. He just was instantly no, like, oh! he just... <laughs> uh, And I wondered if that was because uh... he was Bankai when he fought Eelfort, and so something maybe triggered, and he was like, oh, this is the skill set I need in order to defeat this person? I don't know. Is that... Yeah, because if you think about how Ichigo went about his fight, and then you've got Renji just not even strategically thinking he just went full on Bankai no, and it, is that is that Renji's default now like just to go Bankai because there's no way up from Bankai that's what fucking happened <laughs> well you'd think that but <laughs> this is a shonen too, <laughs> <laughs> um, true yeah uh, 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 
I, I do wonder whether, because, I mean, Ichigo doesn't really do this, but it's like, I, I, th- I think I've mentioned this on a previous episode of the podcast, too, because Renji, Renji learned his Bankai, not in that, like, Urahara Kisuke three-day pressure cooker way, like a couple other people did, but, like, he... He so he he trained with Ikaku, and there was that whole thing. I sort of wonder whether I mean I know that training for Bankai is is probably something that Soul Reapers do. Like, of course you want Bankai, you want this next level of power, especially if you have goals to become a captain or move through the ranks or whatever. Um, so I sort of wonder whether yeah, like whether hyper focusing on achieving power through Bankai alone actually leads the Bankai practitioner to be a little bit t- tunnel vision-y about it. Like, oh, I have Bankai, therefore Bankai is the best thing to use in every situation. Like, maybe not sometimes. Mm. And maybe that's what makes some of the captains so great, because we haven't, like, some captains we've seen go Bankai, and some we haven't, because they maybe know that yeah. they can be a little more discerning and use different powers and different skill sets when they're fac- facing different people. Mm-hmm. Like offering someone a drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Or it's like, but we also don't know. Like, so, right, we can take it as read that all of the captains have Bonkai, probably, pretty much. That's like usually a requirement. That's usually a requirement for being captain. Yeah. Um, But we also don't know what those Bonkai do, right? So, like, maybe. Mm hmm. Whatever Kyoriku's Bankai does, if he has Bankai, it may not have actually served him in that fight during, uh, in that fight, quote unquote, fight with Chad. Like, who knows? Even if it would have been a one hit KO, like, who knows? Yeah. I feel like so far we've always seen these Bankais as, you know, good things right. about, a uh, good things, and, you know, they gain power from it, but, you know, the Zanpak Toe is a reflection of somebody's soul. Mm-hmm. So it could be theorized that, you know, there are going to be things that you don't like about yourself. So, you yeah. know, this, there could be some Bankais that be a manifestation of that bad side of you that you don't like. So there may be people that don't like their Bankai at all. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and oh man, there's also something to... Uh, there, there's a level of self-knowledge and self-understanding and then self-acceptance that is almost definitely required to achieve Bankai because you have to be prepared to face a physical manifestation of what lives inside you uh and it depends on what you're like right like if you're if you're Mayuri and you have a giant poison baby you're gonna go nice I'm into that and if that was somebody else's but not that it would be because that's not how it works but if somebody else has a Bankai that is similarly like I don't want to say objectively fucked up, but that, like, is collectively probably regarded as not cute or off-putting or something. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is gonna, like, not everybody's gonna be down, you know? Ooh! Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So maybe that's what it's, maybe that's what it's saying about Renji. Maybe Renji, like, is really proud of what he's achieved, and now that he's got Bankai, he's like, here we go, I am gonna fuck you up with my Bankai right away because I can do this now. Like, maybe that's where that's coming from. And I think as well that is actually quite true to Renji's character. I think so too. Because, you know, he's achieved something that his captain, someone who he inspires to defeat, has said that he would never get in a million years because, you know... Um, only certain types of people can get Bankai, and yet here's Renji, not that certain type of people according to his captain's standards, with Bankai. So yeah, he is going to use it because he's proud of it. It's something that he's achieved, and he's proved to himself. And if you take into effect that, you know, Rukia is also out there fighting, he's sensed Rukia, at least in the manga, he's sensed Rukia fighting, he's sensed Rukia, and, you know, he's not trying to one-up her, but he's trying to be on her level again, which we saw back in the academy mm-hmm. that he doesn't feel that he can be on her level anymore because she now has this nobility status. Yeah. And he's constantly trying to prove his worth, to prove being Rukia's friend again, to prove being the lieutenant that he is. Yeah. So yeah. No, I like that. Which is absolutely wild actually if you think about it. Both Renji and Rukia, who of course both have 
to humble origins and have both achieved status that neither of them, I'm sure, ever thought they were going to achieve when they were younger. Mm-hmm. Rukia's Achilles heel in the fight with Aaron Yero was her self-doubt of all things. So you've got someone like Renji who was looking at Rukia like, I'm never going to be on your level. Meanwhile, Rukia internally is like, I'm the worst. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, it's... These relationships are so fascinating, and it's one of the reasons I love this manga and anime. Oh, it's so good. And, like, we're finding little bits. Like, I, for one, am excited for this continuation of Xyle and Renji. Oh, my God. I, you... I, mean, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because you're just so passionate about Xyle, and he's never been a character that, you know, I've been passionate about, but having your enthusiasm for this character is making me really excited to see this, you know, this fight. I'm so glad to hear that. Eyes. I also think, I don't yeah. know, I, I get the sense, and maybe this is because in 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 the fandom space, I think a lot of us kind of opt into our little, like, groups of people who care about the same characters that we do, you know? And so mm-hmm. um, there are some of the Iran cars who, ever since I first watched Bleach, I was like, oh, you're so cool. And I sort of didn't realize that there are folks out there who are, like, kind of indifferent to the Iran cars. While on the flip side, like, I never really cared too much about Toshiro, for example, but I've then been on the podcast with people who who feel really strongly about Toshiro, and then a couple of years ago, I, like, wrote a fic about the relationship between Ukitake and Toshiro, and I never would have done that without this exposure because it's just so easy to stick to what you like and what you know, you know? So Exactly, yes, yeah. Yes, all this to say, I agree. I feel the same way, and I'm glad yeah. to hear that you're excited <laughs> because I, I like, just... Yeah. And I like I maybe I've said this before, but there there are, whatever there are some fights coming up that I'm really fucking stoked about, and I do, I'm sure that we've I've expressed at some point what my like favorite fights in Bleach are, but the one that just I, it's yeah the 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 fight the very first fight that made me like sob is in this arc, um mm-hmm. and yeah yep it's uh, yep I just love it I just love it. Mm. I don't want to say who it is because that's a spoiler, but yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I th- yeah. I think I can. Yeah. I'm sure you can. Yeah. <sighs> uh, okay. So, yeah, man, I don't really have anything else to say about 159. Do you? No, not really. No. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, before we move on to 160, uh, the anime episode, I suppose, should we move on to... Uh, oh god structurally this feels like another messy one but anime and manga differences um it's not too bad uh we start with the f- the last one ended with um 267 legions of regret the middle part and we're actually ending starting that with the end of that so it starts with 267 legions of regret 268 you are forbidden to die and then the start of 269 which is the end is near mm. And so here's a fun fact. The flashbacks within flashbacks are anime only. Wait, what? Every part? <laughs> the only, we see the flashback. We see the Rukia climbing Mount Koifushi. Yeah. And we see them eating the onigiri and stopping for lunch. But all of the other flashbacks... Yeah, no, does not go into that much detail. Okay, and even I'm happy with that. That's the, fine. Yeah, and some of the flashbacks that we got are word for word from the last time we saw them in the anime. So yeah, they literally I just I th- plop the. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, yeah, they've literally just pulled it from the previous episode and dumped it in there. They were buying time. They were clearly um, buying time. They really were, yeah. yeah. Um, although the the cute moment of um, Kayen throwing Rukia her Zampacto back and <gasps> Rukia going, You can't throw that in chop! That was anime only. <sighs> Which was sad because that was kind of cute. cute, and that was, and it was like Rukia, you know, being herself, and you know, like she, normally she's so shy and reserved, mm. but she came out of her shell for that bit, and I thought that was cute. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rukia calls Kyan melodramatic, but in the anime oh. he's sappy. Oh, I like both of those for him, actually. Yeah. Oh. And then the final part of the flashback 
Um, we don't see it in the anime, but the final words of the flashback in the manga are, Rukia, because of you, I can leave my heart here. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. And we, it's ju- it just, we, like, prefaces. Have we, have we heard that before from him the, when we when we first saw her her facing off against the Metastasia Hollow Cayenne situation? I feel like... I think we may have. That's familiar to me. Um, I don't know whether it's familiar to me because I've just, yeah. like, spent time with that whole situation but oh because yeah because it ends with that and then the manga goes in i remember and then it talks about you know okay. whereas the anime still does the i remember bit but it's not prefaced with kyan's final words okay. in the manga all right okay fair enough Yep, and then the last difference I have is during Rukia's resolve to continue, they show flashbacks of everybody of who she's fighting for, of like, you know, of who's counting on her. Um, Whereas in the manga, in the anime, they show a flashback of Ichigo fighting Aizen and saving her at the top of the Sogyoku. Yeah, yeah. Which wasn't in the manga. In the manga, it was just a panel of Rukia and Renji together. (gasps) What? They cut out a Ruki and Renji panel to add Ichigo and Ruki no stuff. No wonder there are ship wars. Jesus Christ. Right? What a nightmare. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is fascinating. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, huh. But yeah, that that was it. That's It's just like, yeah, it was literally just the majority of the bulk of that episode came from the meta flashbacks. Yeah, it did. It really did. Um, Jeez. Uh, I guess this may or may not have I because it's it's familiar to me. So, but so I can't remember with it whether this is something that we are supposed to have encountered earlier, either in the anime or in the manga. Uh, but it was definitely part of the flashback this time. This is just a tiny little thing, but it really hit me um, when Kayan does that bit where he's like, "Oh yeah, I basically run things around here. So if you slip up and call me Captain Shiba, then that that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That bit." Um, I guess it just really hit me for the first time how much Cayenne probably wanted to be captain one day. Like, that mm. that was probably a big goal of his. And it also occurs, to, like, we don't know at, that at the time of Rukia's coming up through the 13th Division how long he's been a lieutenant or, like, what that process, decision-making process, promotion process was like. Uh, but, yeah, it, I... Yeah, I just it's like oh, it, it's it's super clear that that was a goal, and that's the kind of thing that I feel like could certainly have been within reach for him if things had been different. So, and it it oh, also like sure, it might explain definitely. why yeah. the Thirteenth Division doesn't have a lieutenant right now. If if Ukitake is like waiting to be like, I, I I I don't know who else is right for this job. Actually, actually, because it was such a big void to fill best decision making process exactly. and mm, no but y- 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 you know yeah and if it took this long for Rukia to get over Kayan's death <sighs> then it's probably taken the same amount of time for Okutaki to get over it as well yeah you gotta wonder though I, I he's he's so much older than her so I'm kind of like he's probably more accustomed to losing people not that that actually makes it mm-hmm. easier but I don't know speculation um, so not to dwell yeah. on that, because that's not really what this episode is about, but it's, I, mean, I guess it kind of is. The episode is definitely about yeah. Cayenne, so I guess that's not completely out of scope. It just, yeah, it really hit me this time. Um, something else that I wanted to just name, it, I wanted to talk about the whole heart concept in the first place, mm-hmm. uh, because there is a nuance that, uh, like, I, I, I don't want to, claim that my knowledge of Japanese is as deep as that of a native speaker or someone who studied for years and years or something, but uh, I do just want to clarify that there are multiple ways to say a couple of words that can be reasonably translated as heart uh, if you're translating into English, and the word that they use in Japanese is kokoro, which isn't Mm -hmm. just the heart inside your body it's like this is a concept that is it's one of those things not unlike honorific sometimes that is really difficult to capture the nuance of if you're translating it into a different language but just to name that it's not just like 
oh, the it's not the vessel inside your body. Like, that's not what Kokoro is. Kokoro is heart, soul, mind, spirit, being all kind of enmeshed in one, like an essence of all of those things. Like, soul is almost closer, but because of the content of Bleach, it makes total sense to me that that's, that's not the word that they used and and besides the way that it's written like it's it's the heart character like that's uh-huh. that's what that is so they, they they overlap but it's it just just to name that it's not just it's not physical it's not and it's not simple so if Kayan says like my kokoro is between us or, or, or that or like that's what exists between people it it, it makes more sense if you're referring to this sort of, I don't want to say it's a nebulous concept, but this untranslatable concept rather than just, you know, heart in English. That, that the heart in English is just a little too simple for what Kayan is actually talking about here. Yes, yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of words in Japanese that are like that. Um, that, you know, they have such beautiful meanings but they just don't translate into English. Mm. And it's a, it's a shame because there are some really beautiful words out there. Yeah. That just me that just have a whole complete saying, sentence meaning to them. Yeah. So. So yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Did you have any anything that you wanted to discuss or address or name in episode one hundred and sixty? Um, I love the fact that we found we got some a little bit of outside of the Soete because you know yeah! we know the Soete pretty well. Good point. Uh. Yeah, and today we they went somewhere else. They went to the northern end of West Rukon, the third district, yeah. and they climbed Mount, Mount Koifushi, which, yeah, and which is like you know it's a mountain, which you, from the places that we've seen of the Rukon so far, we've just seen houses, and yeah. you know we just think it's this huge big town, but there's actual scenery out there and I like to think you know it just it creates this backdrop for a whole world that we can create like I like to think there's an ocean out there oh, that there's, there's lakes that there's rivers be. that there's mountains yeah so yeah yeah so I like that little bit of world building that we got and it also goes to show that there can be variety within the Rukon because which also like reminding folks that the higher up you count in numbers the like sh- shittier the district is. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is only the third district which is like modest you know and I mean clearly it's, yeah. it's more nature than it is residential it seems or at least the parts that we see Rukia and Cayenne spending time in. Uh, but like the uh-huh. Rukon doesn't fully suck <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it as it safe as no. the walled Seireite? Like, no, probably not. But no, you know, people live there. People make their lives there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had yeah, and then the only other thing oh, I go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Nope, go ahead. No, uh, mine was the only other thing I have is that Rukia defeats an actual Espada, a numbered Espada, yeah. by herself. And it's not like, it's not one of those fallen loaves of bread, like sandwich and panini, whatever their <laughs> names are from before. Oh, God. That, like, <laughs> yeah. an actual numbered espada by herself without help. So, yeah. go queen. Yeah, I mean, she's like, yeah. she's not okay after, like, she her she is She's not hurt. okay, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she fucking did it. That's massive. Um Speaking of the defeat of Aranero, that is that is one more thing that I wanted to touch on a little bit because he says something really weird when when Rukia kills him, I guess. Um, yeah. There's that which it was I don't know. So he's got the two little heads, and then there's like ugh, the fucking high pitched one that just screams all the time when he's not wearing somebody <laughs> else's face, which is not my favorite. Uh, but. This little tiny head is just like on the ground, flailing, screaming. And the thing that it says is so he's sort of like calling out into the void, but addressing Aizen. And what he says mm-hmm. is, You told me that if I stayed with you, you'd free me from all of this suffering. So that gives us insight. What that tells us is, Aizen has made these Espada promises. Whether he intends to keep them or not is a different question, but Aizen made promises to these people, whether it's just the ten of them or whether it's like the pre-Verona Espada too or like the whole ranks of these 
uh, slightly less intricately formed Iran cars. Like, who's to say? But Eisen has made promises, and we learn that here. Yeah, and I suppose it kind of does make sense, because if you think about it, Eisen is this Soul Reaper who's come into oh, yeah. another territory. Oh, yeah. And he's a fucking like, invader. Of all these, yeah. Yeah, so all these hollows and Iran cars and everything. Would, like if he hadn't have made those promises is that the only thing that's letting him stay there without them attacking him yeah honestly him? like what could possibly be he, yeah. he must have promised them something pretty amazing because otherwise I mean not that hollows are like happy per se but you can just kind of roam the sands and indulge your base needs and hunt and grow and get bigger and like just do all those things that hollows naturally do and by the way like if you are strong enough and big enough and powerful enough, you're going to evolve into an Iran car anyway, eventually, probably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the question of motivation comes up and, like, really good call out that Aizen is fucking up the traditional ecosystem of Waco Mundo by waltzing in and doing <laughs> whatever the fuck he's doing, like giving them sunlight it's weird <laughs> it's really weird like <laughs> it's a place called las noches that means the yeah. night <laughs> uh mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, has he been taking lessons from somebody I else on how to do opposites I don't know. like uh uh it so, well, I mean, so the mood, the mood is backwards, so, like, maybe, and then I was also like, ah, sometimes, at certain times of the year, in some places, it's, the sun doesn't go down even at night, but I don't think that's what Aizen is working with in this situation, so. No. no. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's my last thought. I mean, it was, yeah, it was nice to see those flashbacks, it was... Uh, nice to see Rukia finish this fight, but I don't really have much more to say about it simply because this fight has been going on for a while and we've kind of talked about it and I don't have any... We, we I have. I don't have we've... any spicier takes that come from episode 160 specifically, so... Yeah, we've definitely done this fight like Aranero to death, so... Yeah. 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 But, you know, good for Rukia for finishing yeah. it. <laughs> Without help. Without, without yeah. help. She needs help now. <laughs> but she help. got to this point, which she is pretty impressive. Now. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Uh, well, um, that's it for me for the episodes, I think. Yeah, me too. Okay, should we move on to our yeah. Shinigami Cup Peroxide Edition? Let's do it, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Nomi, who do you think wore it best this week? So my who wore it best is Noitora and his clown shoes. They're so good. They're so pointy. They're so good. <laughs> like little elf shoes or something. I don't know. Little elf They're shoes. They're very good. He's Buddy the Elf. He's like, he towers over everybody. And he screams often. <laughs> like, he screams all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where's that huge Christmas uh. movie, honestly? <laughs> Uh, okay, so, hey, so, um, w once upon a time, I asserted that if someone asked me who wore it best, uh, the answer was always gonna be just Yumichika or just Shinji, and that's the full answer. I'm just gonna, like, add one more person yep. to this little category, <laughs> and I'm gonna say, um, who wore it best? It Zylap Rograns. He, he wore it best. <laughs> what did he wear best? Mm-hmm. How, how often Just did he everything. wear it best? Yeah. <laughs> Will he continue to wear it best indefinitely? Mm-hmm. So I <laughs> just... Uh, yep, that's like my... You can my wear nothing and still wear it best. <laughs> beautiful twinks with chin-length hair. This is what we've got. Um, not that Shinji's <laughs> actually a twink, but like, he doesn't have the same energy. Not the point. No one is asking this question. Um, that's who I think wore it best this week. <laughs> Um, I mean, I saw that coming. So it's yeah, fine. I know. I see. I thought of it, and then I thought, yeah. no, I should do something else. And then I went, mm, I don't know how to not do this. So here we are. I just love beautiful people, <laughs> beautiful anime characters. Anyway, um, yes. Uh, what was your best ship this week? 
so my best shipped was cayenne and that onigiri he was eating because it was all over his face it really was wait that's actually <laughs> so good <laughs> he's making such a fucking mess. Uh, <laughs> it's all over his fingers and yeah and his adorable little face yeah um uh mine mine was also about cayenne this week uh my best ship was just the the strong awesome super solid mentor mentee relationship between rukia and cayenne because we got to see a lot of that he was really really good for her because she's so serious and he helped her see some truths that she wouldn't have been able to see without somebody quite so rambunctious and straight to the point like he was just a great match for her mentor mentee wise so that was my best chip this yeah. week cool yeah oh, all yeah. right uh shall we move on to fandom shout outs now yes let's so my fandom shout out is a fairly new twitter Ooh, feed okay page user person um literally within the past two days and we spoke a little bit earlier about how each volume of bleach has a poem written by uh, kubo yes and this is a twitter feed will basically that is those poems and every day oh. they are going to post those poems and the artwork that goes with it so if you want to know those po um, poems you want to find more insight to the you know the little nuggets that Kai um, Kubo puts in his volumes definitely check these guys out fo give them a follow they've only got two poems up right now but That's you know they're really going to continue cool. daily yeah. oh what a good idea yeah very cool uh mine is uh it's kind of like so that it's 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 an artist rather than a singular piece of art um i would say this is an artist whose work i've enjoyed for a long time and i'm glad that i have cause to share it now because they do primarily draw xyle uh so caveat is that if you're just gonna scroll through this person's page uh they do have some ocs so if that's not your jam then like just know that I guess and the other thing is like it's not incredibly not safe for work but occasionally and just and like that's just kind of a product of what Zyle's character is and that'll come to fruition more as we go through the episodes um occasionally there's stuff that can kind of like dip its toe a little into the not safe for work category but that's not most of what this is mostly it's just like Zyle wearing cool suits and like Zyle just really well drawn or with his hair in different ways um so this is a, uh -huh. a person who goes by Yuki Toko on Tumblr uh and just uh to show you a little bit of the kind of thing that you'll find if you scroll through um there's one of Zyle wearing like a Shihaka show and hanging out with some Shinigami it, like if he weren't a hollow there's one of him like wearing a nice coat and holding a cup of coffee. Um, it's just this is a person Aww. who really likes this character and who has drawn them a lot. Yeah. And I think it's a really lovely interpretation. And uh, I just want to boost this person's work because I, I don't know. I like I don't know how many people are like massive fans of Zyle, but if you like me also really enjoy this character, then please give this person a follow <laughs> yeah. because um, I don't think that there are like loads of us, but I don't know. We're cool. <laughs> I think we're cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. That that's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I love how soft he looks in when he's just holding his coffee. Yeah. The f the the fun one with him and Mayuri, you can definitely see them being a working yeah. together. There's one I just shared of him just like just Aww. hugging Rukia, and Rukia has some little bunny ears on. Yeah. <laughs> it's just cute. <laughs> they they also cute, which judging by the fact that it's Zyle aren't isn't probably a headband it is probably oh that's a I didn't think of it that way but you might be right yep <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> or it's just Rukia wearing bunny ears for for who knows whatever reason I don't know Zyle has yeah uh, there's a, there is a level of like softness to him that sometimes goes underappreciated in my opinion but yeah anyway so yeah that's what I got um wow love it I guess uh that's it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Woo. I feel, it's so funny. I feel, because there's clearly, we're so in the middle of things. So I'm like, oh, gee, I feel like there should be more to talk about. But it's like, no, we'll just, 
We'll get to that, I guess. We'll get to that with the four episodes we've got to watch for next time. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yes, we will. Which, oh, <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of Zyl content coming up, so get hype. Uh, get, get hype. Hyped. I'm hyped. Get <laughs> Oh gosh! I fall fall through fall through <laughs> holes in the wall and in the ground and get on my level, which is like not up high, but instead like down down in the the trap <laughs> recesses of d- twisted hearts and minds and brains and whatever. Like no, 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 not I I don't know. I just I love my mad scientist. Okay, he's. I was about to call him a good boy, and I went, that's not true. Um, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well. <laughs> you wonderful souls that's the end of another episode if you like what you heard and you want to get involved you can find us by searching for the say right on instagram and t say right on twitter now ichigo and rukia might reap souls but we are hoping to reap some five star reviews and that is where you come in make like our favorite orange haired protector and ichi go to itunes to rate us and review us and make us feel like number one and to those of you listening on youtube don't forget to be like chad and give us that good good thumbs up we really appreciate it on the next episode of the podcast we'll be covering anime episodes 161 the cruel arankar ukiora's provocation 162 xylaparo laughs the net trapping renji is complete 163 shinigami and quincy the battle of madness and 164 ishida's strategy the 22nd offense and defense we'll see you souls then till next time bye bye I don't want to say who it is because that's a spoiler, but yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I th- yeah. I think I can. Guess. I'm sure you can. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah it's fully. Yeah. F- I'll cut that out, but it's fully that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so- like I was a fucking mess. Like, I, uh, the, like, the, the, oh. as, he's, as his, as his, <laughs> because with the, I was like, oh my God, this is awful. <laughs> Oh, such a good one. Okay. Anyway. <laughs>